and that is it. So with that, Cyrus is zero two in this match. Yeah, a little bit, little bit of a unfortunate turnaround there for Cyrus, having the the main deck problem, only really getting to play one and a half games there. Yep. To answer Metronomy in chat, uh, the ready, the, the ready power of uh, Drew's Colossal Walker is basic, so it cannot be used on your opponent's turn, and pretty much only can be used during one of your main phases with nothing on the chain. So what's what's future gaining by running Diamond? Because the deck he's running has pretty much the exact same goals as a mono sapphire deck right I, he's obviously gaining the marble um but what are the other reasons for going into sapphire as well when the goal is the same so i think the diamond was probably i mean we didn't see it but it seems likely the angel's probably hiding somewhere in the deck there and also you get some better removal options uh, instead of having the time ripple that's just just the temporary removal you could have maybe something like Inner Conflict or Repel uh, give you some additional options that you can add in and be a little bit harder removal for some of the bigger threats. It could be that Diamond was open in his team, so uh, perhaps being able to side in some of those better removal cards as well. Side deck is um, where some of those cards may lie. Yeah, and I, I think from the chat here, just to just to address this here too, so I think what Metronomy is trying to ask uh, about the the Grulk, or I'm sorry, the uh, the Drew's Colossal Walker question. So the the reason that he he might choose not to uh, ready it there is if he ha if the opponent has Grulk, it will it will end up being that Cyrus loses the eight health for no reason because he'll end up uh, having the Grulk exhausted down uh, anyway. So I, I think if I was in that spot, I probably would have done that as well. You're, you're in kind of a bad spot where if the opponent has multiple Grulks or Mastery, you're, in, you're probably going to lose anyway. But if you at least give yourself the health that you'd be able to uh, ready the, the Drew, maybe you'd be able to turn around. But I think that's, that's probably that he's going to be dead here regardless if that happens. Do we have any more games in progress that we can put on? Do have some others. I don't know, we'll go peek it. Neo, do you see any others that you'd like to go and view while we're waiting? Um, I think there's a couple more that are still playing for us. The motivation but is I, still playing. I guess we'd have to jump in mid-game. Let me go check out like the status of how far they are in. It looks like the motivation's near the start of a game. Not much has happened, so let's pull that one up. I'm not sure which game it is, but it's, it's sort of turn four by the look of things. Sure, sounds like a winner. Tech, you got that one up? Tech, are you there? Well, if that's the intention, I can describe what was, what's on the board. The game had, has progressed a little bit. Um, it is actually the motivation versus Havoc. Havoc running Zared Venom Scorn, uh, the motivation running Dimid, and it looks to be a similar deck to what uh, Cyrus is currently running. Um, uh, Havoc had a Vampire King on the board. Uh, the motivation just had just drawn an Angel of Dawn with correct threshold, so he gets that for free. He also has a Hope Heart Unicorn on board, um, and using a Crackling Bolt and a Heat Wave to kill the. Um, there it is. Uh, he had just used a Crackling Bolt to um, uh, kill that Vampire King, but um, Havoc, right before the game came on, um, he Relentless Corruption, two cards off of the motivation's deck. Um, 
it is an escalation card and it looks like he has used it earlier in this game and one of those cards was a crackling bolt so able to use that it changes the threshold into blood so he does use it to kill the um the whole part unicorn on um the motivation side And uh, Zared being what he is, uh, he decides to make Angel of Dawn 3-3 uh, three, three, rather than 4-4, four, four, giving minus one attack, minus one defense, and Angel of Dawn swinging in for three. Havoc is at 11, the motivation at 26, getting some help uh, at some point earlier in this game. It is a little surprising to see that one card in the motivation's hand there. I wonder if Havoc is playing a bit more aggressive version of a mono blood deck here. This would likely be a second or third game, so that is that is uh, fair. Yeah, I mean, the rubies come down there, so it's safe to assume there are some low back ends here. Um, you know, maybe... That, that could, however, be a ruby from the Motivations deck as well. Relentless Corruption, That's also possibly. That's true. true. Yeah. Hard to say for sure here. For Havoc's turn, we see him play a Vampire King as well as a Living Totem. I mean, he waves a good answer to Living Totem one too. Yeah, the Living My Totem. My guess is that it's uh, you, he's Ooh, using that it in the is way a, that we saw. That's an amazing top deck for the motivation, getting a crackling bolt, which just lets him heat wave and then kill the Vampire King. Havoc's not going to be happy to see that. Of course, the Angel is tough enough to survive that, and. Still do three damage. So that was he's probably still probably the purpose behind Havoc giving it minus one minus one, possibly having that vampire king in hand already and intending it to be able to block it and kill it if it were to try to attack. But that being thwarted, also okay to just reduce the amount of damage that you're going to take from the angel there until you oh, are yes. able to stabilize on an empty board with your charge power that's just there. Um, that's always a fair play, just re indeed reducing that damage. Here for Havoc's turn, we see that he's drawn another card and he's decided to play Zentos Inquisitor here with the Brutality Gem, I would assume. Would seem so. That would change Angel of Dawn to zero attack, so that is effectively yep. a flight jump blocker at this point. Yep. Pretty, Pretty strong for him right now. <coughs> Now, the motivation does only have four resources, so that last card in his hand, uh, all of a sudden, that's no longer a problem, as he does rip the shard off the top of the deck. He's probably up against uh, Quad Extinction, so that's not necessarily going to stick around too long, but Havoc does have to have it. If he does have it, however, he is sitting on an Inquisitor, so he's not going to be losing too much from it. Indeed, when it dies, it goes back to you, back to your hand. When so, Drew's Colossal Walker, one of the stronger cards against the Blood decks, because it is a a huge artifact threat. It's something that that the Blood decks don't have a lot of great answers to. There is Extinction, but outside of that, there's a lot of weakness to it. And with Havoc at eight health, there is a there's a pretty good chance that the motivation could take this one, unless Havoc has a couple of answers in his hand now to delay the game. I mean Given the current state, he could have a second out, and that's a block and terrible transfer because he does have the five blood threshold that would keep him alive. Uh, he would take a bunch of crush damage, but the the life from the terrible transfer would just about keep him alive and kicking. So if he's got one of the two, he can survive a Druze. Right, or you take... And with, with motivation having no cards in play, you could also go for the, the transfer pre-damage and just gain the health first just in case but I guess if he has the burn regardless it ends up still stopping or preventing the the Drew's walker from dying that way I don't know it's hard to say what Havoc's got here well a third Vampire King yep Vampire King comes down uh, he can I suppose go to one uh, with a Vampire King out and then swing back next turn he could seems, just block with the Inquisitor, but... Seems to be the plan. The Motivation does not have any charges at this moment, though, so unable to 
gain health from the Strew attack. Not that that's a huge problem with 29 health currently. Let's see what he decides to block with here. He has to block or it's lethal, so let's see what he goes with. And when he, I am assuming that he will block with Zentoth's Inquisitor. That goes back to his hand. That ensures that he can uh, reduce Drews to five attack. A little bit more manageable. Still not excellent to uh, deal with. Um, but the life gain from uh, Vampire King the next turn will put him at um, at four, I which think is the exactly. Biggest question. The biggest question if you're on Havoc's side is you're trying to guess, does the does my opponent have Burn or Crackling Bolt, and can I afford to, to play around mm -hmm. it here? It's a top deck, though, so he's gone with the Inquisitor. That's It's a relatively s safe assumption. He has, uh, the motivation has used up two Crackling Bolts and two Heat Waves and two Burns, and Havoc has taken one of his Crackling Bolts. So that's a lot. That's a lot of direct damage actions removed from the motivations option. So, but with that living with, totem played, I agree with that. One one small surprise seeing the Drew's Walker getting ready on the motivations turn here. He has the health to just do that. It's not really a benefit to not. Well, there could be. It makes me wonder if Havoc is playing speed troops. Like, is there well, a reason that he needs to do that? I don't think he is. I think it was kind of just an oversight. Like, he was thinking, I'm on 29 health. I'm going to do this anyway, perhaps. So I'll just do it now. But obviously, there is a slight drawback to doing it now. And that if you do get extinction, you just paid uh, the life for no reason. Obviously, in, you can't it, stop the Vampire King. In this in this position, I I think that is that might be a trade-off he was willing to make. I mean, he wasn't answered the turn before, wasn't answered the... Um, if there was an answer, it would have been played by now. Or top decked. Yeah, it's just a top deck question. Like, extinction. Like, it, the, the, the only downside really is Vampire King attack, extinction, after, after combat. And then you're just down the 8 health. Anyway, looks like Havoc I is mean, considering his options here still. I think it's got to be Inquisitor again, and... Put the Inquisitor down onto the the Drews if he doesn't have the extinction. Obviously, he doesn't, or he wouldn't have used his charge power there. But you've got to then uh, s swing with Vampire King in order to survive, which is kind of strange. I guess you don't have to. You could block with Vampire King, but then the Tome can get flight. So he's in a he's in a spot here. Well, gaining that charge allows um, him to reduce um, reduce Drews to seven attack. Inquisitor would take it down to three attack, uh, to four attack rather, and he could block and uh, survive where he to swing. The problem is that Living Totem is that two extra damage. The motivation needs to to win in that situation, and that would leave Havoc with one resource. And what blood thing, one resource could possibly affect things that you'd probably expect to play. Not ruling out sorrow or anything, but I, I don't see it. <laughs> if if Havoc, well, if Havoc just blocks with Vampire King plus the um, the Zentos Inquisitor, he would the the Drew's Walker would go down to four. We're assuming that he plays it again, so Havoc would would take four. He would have to be able to gain the three health back and block one from the Zentos Inquisitor, which he could do, and then block the Living Totem with the Vampire King. So I think he just barely lives. If if we don't see anything else. Well, we've um, seen him pass his turn here without playing anything. That, to me, says that we're looking at a terrible transfer play. Um, right. that, that's what he's representing. It's representing some just... kind of removal, for sure. Yep. Ow. Terrible transfer, maybe maybe murder as well. Oh, oh, good lord. <laughs> I, was, I had just been talking about how much direct damage is left in the Motivations deck as he top decks a burn. I like how Angel of Dawn is even attacking. And Motivation attacks in with everybody. Let's see what tricks you have, Havoc. And given that Burn is a quick action, 
even mm. if even if Havoc had a terrible transfer out, he could do that in response. That that may have been a misplay there, that burn. We'll see. Um, he could have held up in response to a transfer if Havoc does have the transfer. Now, the motivation is actually a newer player. He's still, uh, just from watching he, uh, his streams, he is still um, gaining experience, experimenting with Constructed. So this this may be the kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> we see Havoc going for the, the self-kill here. Yep, that's game over for him. I would have personally murdered the Angel of Dawn because that's equally as ineffective, but that works. But yeah, that would have that would have worked if he had not drawn the burn. He would have been on one again uh, and minus a Vampire King. Yep, and that's the end of it there. Is that the so, last game? I think it probably is from what Havoc's saying. 